Thanks for asking about the second year medical student. It's nice to meet you. Despite my learning, I've been asked to uh, conduct an examination of your heart today. So this likes to involve, first of all, you're removing your clothes from the waist up. I then need to have a look at your hands and face and have a look and feel of your chest and have a listen to my stethoscope to get a general idea of how your heart's doing. It shouldn't be painful, but if it is, what's on any point? Does that sound okay? Yep, that's fine. Okay, if you'd just like to remove your shirt for me, I'll just go and wash my hands. Okay. I'm just going to comment to the doctor as I go along. So, yep, that's fine. Just like to, you know, time. I'll just pop that into the chair for you. <coughs> okay, so if you just lie back, what we'll do first is just make sure you're up to five degrees. Okay, and now lie back. Are you comfortable there? Yeah, that's fine. Good. Okay, so on inspection, first of all, around the bed, there's no signs of any bedside medication, there are no walking aids, uh, and no oxygen cylinders that are being used. The patient themselves appears quite well perfused. Uh, not in any obvious discomfort, not sweating or pale, uh, not in any pain. Do you have pain in the hands? No. Can I have both hands, please? Mm. Okay, the hands mm. feel warm, look well perfused. Nails themselves don't show any signs of splint hemorrhages. No Jamie lesions on the back uh, dorsum of the wrist. No signs of any nicotine staining. Can I ask you to put your fingers like that for me, please? Mm. Just press them together. Just take a look through them. Good, so the angle of the nail bed's preserved, so it doesn't appear to be clubbing. That's fine. If you turn your hands over. Okay, so no Osler's notes on the fingertips. That's fine. Okay, I just need to feel for the parts in both your wrists. Okay, so those are in sync. And one thing I'll quickly do is completely refill. Can I ask you to... Okay, so that's less than two seconds, which is normal. I'm just going to take your pulse now. Okay, can I just relax your hand across your chest for me? Lift the hand up. Okay, that's good. So, pulse is 64 beats per minute. It's regular at the radial pulse. So you can assess the car uh, the rate, volume, and um, regularity of the pulse. The uh, pulses are in sync. I normally proceed to do blood pressure at this point, but I'm going to carry on. I'm just going to look at the eyes now. So no corneal arcus, no xanthal asthma around the eyes. Just going to pull down your eyelid. No pile of conjunctiva. There's no signs of any male eye flush, which, uh, which would point towards mitral stenosis. Um, can I have a look at your uh, in your mouth, please? If you just like to open your mouth and lift up your tongue. I'm just going to have a look inside. Okay, so no central cyanosis and also assessing so dental hygiene, which is good. So no risk factors for particular bacterial in the cavity so far. Um, have a look at the neck. I'm just going to feel for the pulse in your neck. So this is the carotid pulse. It's medial to the cladomastoid. And then this mass. Okay, so that's on both sides. Just above the eye now. And then it will up the left. Okay, it's a good strong pulse. So can I ask you just to relax your head back and look towards that side for me, please? Okay, so I'm just going to get down the horizontal level and look at the base of the neck between the heads of the sternocleidomastoid. Look across the base of the neck. You see a slight pulsation here. It's going to confirm it's the JVP secludable, non-palpable. Well if I wanted to, I could consider a uh, better juggler reflux. But um, I'm fairly certain that's JBP, so I'm going to measure the vertical height between the pulsation and the sternal notch. It's hard. So that's three centimeters, which is within the normal range. The JBP is not raised. Now, looking at the chest, close inspection of the chest reveals no um, midline stenotomy, there's no cardiac surgery previously performed, no pacemaker scars. 
no chest wall deformities such as pectus excavatum, and no visible pulsations. Do you have any pain in the chest? No. Okay, so I'm just going to put my hands across the chest. Okay, so performing the Z maneuver. Good. I'm just going to feel for the apex speed starting very laterally. I'm going to localize with one finger. Good. Now I'm going to assess that in terms of the rib spaces. So, second, third, fourth, fifth intercostal space. Let's say the mid clavicular line, which is considered normal, so the epic speed is not displaced. And now I'm going to have a listen with my stethoscope. Uh, it's a thickening of the skin. Okay, so that's one with the bell at the apex. I'm just going to feel the pods at the same time so we can make sure we can identify S1 and S2. And there's a mass in there. Uh, the shape of the mass is Listen to the low at the left sternal edge, the tricuspid area. It's quite no, hard. Okay, sorry. Do you mind if I explain that uh, I feel the mass no, into no, detail? No, I mean, put your hand by your side and then don't, don't ask Second exactly left at the same time. Second left intercostal space, the pelvic pulmonary area. And then, and then, and I'm going to feel the mass. This is where you're most likely to hear physiological yeah. splitting. Alta so you need to the the determine whether the splitting is affected by inspiration and, and expiration. The size and shape of the place. No, no. The thing is, if the mass were here, you need to just feed it. But the second the right intercostal right space with the aortic area. Okay. I want to feel around your areola. Yeah. Would that be alright? I'm going to feel around your nipple. Okay, good. Now, what I'd like you to do is, can you roll over away from me, just onto your left-hand side slightly? And just, yeah, just, just stay there for a second. Okay, that's fine. If you'd just like to sit up for me, please. So, mitral murmurs would radiate to the axilla, and now aortic murmurs. Yeah. You just take a deep breath in, no, I'll, deep breath I'll, I'll out, for it, okay. and hold it there. Yeah. And then you do want so to listen to the All right. Good. Okay, we can breathe again. This is just the carotids, very really carotid yeah. breathing. You're the one who's doing after me, Freak. Yeah, but there's nothing like tail. With the te with the tail of the breath, it goes like this. There's a bit of um soft tissue, um soft cutaneous tissue, right? So it goes underneath the area and you try to the base. Mm -hmm. and the so the tail of the breath goes into that so it's very important to be able to feel the tail because that's you know if some of the muscles. So no basal crackles. Telling you all the pathology there. Where? In this place. Good. So press against the sacrum. Sacral edema. Sacral edema, which is like to lie back. Do you have any pain in your legs? Trouser legs. Okay, so first of all, inspecting, so no scars. Uh, Trying to indicate removal of the saphenous veins. Pressing against the bony prominence. No proof of edema either. That's great, thank you very much. Um, that completes my examination. Thank you for being so patient. I should have had to get And um, I'm just going to go wash my hands and report my findings to the doctor. Are you comfortable? Yeah, fine. Do you have any questions? No. Good. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so further tests I might want to do, uh, if warranted for a patient showing cardiovascular signs, would be to uh, perform a full um, peripheral vascular exam. I'd also like to look at ECG and chest x-ray in this patient. Oh, yeah.